What's up guys, this is Chris from Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the 10 best guns of 2021. Now, we've ordered these by not only price, but performance as well. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the accuracy, the speed, the reliability, the ergonomics, the availability, the availability of parts and accessories, which is always very important as well. I think a lot of times when people talk about that, they forget that you actually have to get the gun, get the parts for it, get the ammo. So that's very important, especially in 2021 where shortages are just a thing. So I'm pretty excited because even though this was supposed to be a lackluster year, this was actually the hardest year I've ever had choosing just five. So I didn't, I chose 10, because there have been a lot of really good guns that have come out this year, and a lot of really unique guns as well that I've been very excited about. Some guns that have taken a while, some guns that came wildly out of nowhere, and overall, I think it's been a pretty fantastic year for firearms. So strap in and we'll get right into it. Before we do that, we're gonna mention my Patreon supporters. My Patreon supporters, uh, you guys support the channel. We're just a small channel, we're not purchased. We don't have overlords or anything like that. So I'd appreciate if you get on there, click that link, and join up in the Patriot Squad. Also in the description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It's a youth shelter. I try to support that whenever I can because those kids could use your help. And during the holiday season, I'd really appreciate it if you get on there and give those kids a couple bucks. Maybe you guys can give them the holidays that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So thanks for supporting that. Thanks for supporting me. And without further ado, number 10. Uh, number 10, I put the CZ Tactical Sport 2 uh, just because it's one of the best guns that come out in 2021 for sure. It is at the 10 spot, not because of its performance, but because it is very similar to several other guns that CZ came out with. And I feel like it kind of got knocked a little bit for innovation. It is a single action only CZ 75 variant designed for competition and designed for specific uh, divisions of competition as well. It comes in 40 and nine millimeter, and it also has a 5.2 inch barrel, uh, 20 round magazine capacity, comes with three mags, awesome capacity right out of the gate and then the overall weight I believe is around 44 ounces similar weight to the shadow 2 however the tactical sport is not only just single action only unlike the tactical sport 2 which is double single uh, so it does have inherently a better trigger but it is not legal in many uh, divisions it also does not have a dust cover or a picatinny rail in the front of it it does have some great ergonomics this year they changed the tactical sport 2 frame from the original checkmate frame to the more Shadow 2 style frame, which I think fits a lot better, and added a few accessories as well. The sights and the trigger on the Tactical Sport 2 are some of the best you've ever seen, and in the right hands, it's one of the most accurate pistols on the planet. Very easy to shoot, very fun, although the price is around $2,000, so it is limited to people that really want the gun. It's kind of a shame, but if you want high performance, sometimes you gotta pay for it. In at number nine, we have a more budget-oriented gun. This is actually a gun more geared toward concealed carry, and is actually my wife's new carry gun. Well, for now. It is the Kimber Mako. Now the Kimber Mako is a gun I definitely didn't see coming and it has came along with the P365 craze of subcompact double stacks, which I really like a lot. A lot of people shit on those. Man, I like those guns. More capacity and capable caliber that's super comfortable to carry. What's not to love? Well, I mean, sometimes recoil control, right? The, the great thing about the Mako is, is that it seems to handle recoil really well. Uh, it also comes either red dot capable or with a red dot right out of the factory, eliminating the sight radius issue. I like the smaller guns with the dots because you have one point of aim, target focus, so when you shit your pants when the guy's in front of you, you can still focus on the red dot and you can still achieve victory. So I like the red dot for uh, speed, I like it for uh, long distance accuracy, and overall I think it is a great choice for a smaller pistol. Uh, the Mako, we have shot about 500 rounds down range now and it is very reliable. Uh, it comes from a company with a pretty good track record, although it is a little bit sketchy in the subcompact uh, range, but the Mako has been an absolutely excellent gun. For around $500, I think it gives you a lot of features, including a great trigger and good overall ergonomics and texture that I think a lot of the subcompact pistols don't. So I think it's an absolutely great choice for concealed carry and a pretty good choice for an all-around gun. In at number eight, we have the Canic Meta. Now the Canic Meta is essentially another version of the TP9 series, very similar to the Elite series, which I gave a lot of praise last year, except for it has a couple of different features. It has better ergonomics, it has a better grip, overall a little bit better trigger, and then it comes with more bomb-proof sights. And on top of that, it comes with an optics mounting system that you can put an optic on without changing the rear sight, which gives you co-witness, which is 
beneficial for sure, especially if you're running a subpar red dot that might break or it might be out of battery. Having co-witness iron sights gives you that another sighting system, which is kind of a must for most people. Uh, I have it in the five inch, I like it a lot, but it does come in the four and a half inch as well. The five inch, a long slide version, has very little recoil, that P99 amazing pre cock striker trigger, and it is a polymer frame striker fired pistol, uh, making it very lightweight, around 26 overall ounces with a capacity of 19. The gun actually ends up coming with two to three mags, depending on which type you get, and overall, a pretty fantastic gun for the money. One of the best guns you can get for the money by, by a wide margin. Those P99 clones, uh, the, the most recent ones, including the VP9, PPQ, are amazing guns with amazing accuracy because their triggers and their sights are excellent and they come on a standard polymer frame striker fired system, which is easy to use and uh, easy to be accurate with. In at number seven, we have a gun that I really liked that most people haven't done any videos on or haven't really talked about, and that is gonna be the Rome R10 Red River Ultralight. Now, that is a 308 16 inch DI system. Uh, it's basically an AR10 with a 16 inch barrel. And that's been done a lot before, and I get that, but this gun is super lightweight. Coming in at a little over five and a half pounds for a 308 uh, 16 inch gun is very impressive. I mean, and you have the ability to carry the gun around all day and night and still shoot accurately out to a thousand yards. The gun was very accurate. We had sub MOA groups with gold medal match, very impressive. And for the size and weight that the thing is, you'd have no problem hiking that up on the top of your nearest mountain and going elk hunting or going sheep hunting. And if you miss the first round, no rack in the bolt, just repeat shots over and over again until whatever magazine you decided That's to use, cool. either 10, 20, or 30, is empty. So I like the, se the semi-automatic capability. I like that even though it's lightweight, it has so little recoil that you can see the target in the scope even after you pull the trigger. So if you do miss, you can call your miss and you can adjust accordingly. So I love the lightweight, I love the reliability. We had one malfunction, but I believe that was ammunition related. Comes with an AR Gold trigger, comes with awesome Hogue accessories, and overall it is an absolute premium AR-10 that can do everything your AR-10 can do, but it only does it for around five and a half to six pounds. Downside is it's very expensive, coming in well over the $2,000 mark, but hey, so is every other premium AR-10. In at number six, we have one of the more innovative guns on the list, coming from a company that's known for innovation, but not necessarily for quality manufacturing. That is going to be the kel P50. Now, the kel P50 took me by total surprise. I saw the gun originally in early 2021 and was sort of interested, sort of not. And the reason for that is because it looks cool, but so does everything else kel makes. And a lot of the things I purchased from kel did not work at all. This thing, however, actually worked really well. Coming in at around $1,000, it is a P90-esque clone that looks like some shit that you see out of Star Wars. And I'm not joking at all. It really does look like that. I actually called it the Ray Gun in my recent video, and I think a lot of people agree. Uh, it has a weight of 3.2 pounds, a barrel length of around 9.6 inches, and a capacity of a whopping 50 rounds of 5.7 by 28 millimeter. Uh, it uses the same magazines as the uh, FN P90, which are well known to be reliable. It uses a top feed system as opposed to the bottom feed system on the P90, but it has the same capacity, fires the same round, and it does have a similar barrel length. The difference between the P90 and the P50 is that the P50 comes out as a pistol, so you can easily brace it and you can still have a relatively short barrel and an effect effective platform with an overall small platform without having an SBR. Now the PS90 does come out in a smaller configuration as well with a 16 inch barrel because it is a bullpup, but I feel like the ergonomics on the P50 because they come out as a pistol are just that much better. Now the reloading and everything on the, P on the P50 isn't so good, but the swarm of bees approach to pulling the trigger super fast on a 5.7 is so fun. The gun, it's the funnest gun we've shot this year by far. I, I had a blast, 50 rounds in a row of 5.7 feels like you're shooting a high-powered 22 and it just feels great it's a real good time it's it's a very accurate gun we had no reliability issues with it which I do appreciate it looks very cool it fires a very low recoil round and it has a very high capacity uh, and not only is it effective but I would argue the fun factor of it supersedes that and that's a reason in and of itself to actually buy the gun in at number five we have the Beretta M9 a4 
The M9A4 is a double single action nine millimeter pistol with a four and a half inch barrel and an overall weight of around 33 ounces. Comes in a capacity of 18 rounds. Mine came with three magazines, which is really nice. Beretta M9A4 comes optics ready out of the box, which is very unusual compared to most Berettas. On top of that, it has a new overall coating. It has a new grip. Uh, you can either use the G10 aggressive grips with the straight back strap or the curve, the traditional uh, Beretta grip angle. I like that a lot. I like the overall look of it. It has a threaded barrel with night sights as well with a Picatinny rail. I think the Beretta M984 is the best evolution of the combat Beretta platform, either the 92 or the M9. If I was gonna use one for serious use and I wasn't going the Langdon or Wilson combat route, I would get myself a Beretta M984. It comes with all the features that you need, all that reliability, all that accuracy, because they it is both. And it shoots really nice as well. To give you a perspective on how much I like the Beretta M94, it is my new optic and suppressor testing gun because the Beretta M9s are very good to suppress. And on top of that, I like shooting it so much that I find excuses like testing uh, weapon lights and uh, red dots and stuff like that. We have already done the thousand round review, although I don't believe you guys have seen it yet, so stay tuned for that. In at number four, we have the CMMG 4.6, another gun that came way out of left field. The 4.6 was a gun that I definitely didn't think I would be interested in, coming at about four and a half pounds, very lightweight. It is an AR system that chambers the 4.6 round. So think AR pistol that chambers the same round as the HK MP7. Now the MP7 is a very, very popular gun that is in very low supply in the US. Very few people have ever shot one, but everybody's played Call of Duty with one. I can promise you that. And the ammunition is available, but there's nothing to shoot the ammunition until now. And CMMG popped out their Banshee series, which is a very high value AR platform. The, the Banshee in nine millimeter or in 300 blackout or in all the other calibers that it comes in gives you a lot of features, a lot of reliability for very little price. And that's no exception with the 4.6. But the 4.6 gives you a 40 round magazine, super low overall recoil, and uh, a fairly hard hitting, fairly effective design that's really, really easy to shoot. I mean, imagine a AR that has a third of the recoil that is an eight inch barrel, so it's super maneuverable, and has a 40 round capacity, with still a relatively effective caliber. It's effective, it'd be great for uh, apartment self-defense, it would be great for the maybe the lady in your life, and I know that to be true because the front runner for your home defense gun is the, is the CMMG 4.6, and you're the reason why this is on this list. Yep. Size and weight don't matter quite as much to me as it does my wife. I'm six foot four, I weigh 220 pounds. You are five foot two and a lot smaller than me. So it's, it's nice to uh, have something more manageable and more maneuverable that's still effective, and I think the CMMG 4.6 certainly fits that bill. Now the downsides to that are obviously going to be the caliber is harder to find, and it's gonna be much more expensive than 223. but if you don't shoot a lot, and when you do wanna shoot, you wanna enjoy yourself, it's a great choice. In at number three is the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Now just like the Mako and just like the P365, the Shield Plus is a double stack subcompact. And it came out this year and it was probably the double stack subcompact I was the most excited about. Uh, when I shot it, it had the least recoil and I was the most accurate with it. And I'll tell you why. The Shield Plus is around 20 ounces, making it very lightweight. You can either get it in uh, 10 plus one or 13 plus one, entirely up to you. Come comes with two mags and it has a three inch barrel. The texture and the grip on the M&P Shield Plus are just slightly bigger than a lot of the other uh, subcompact single stacks, especially like the 365. So it was easier for me to acquire a firing grip from the draw, which, I, which is one of the most important attributes for me with a carry gun because I've been in some sketchy situations before and they generally all started with a fist fight or a grappling scenario of some type. I've never been in any dangerous scenario that didn't already have hands-on before weapons were drawn. So I like to be able to get my weapon out of wherever it's concealed. That's one of the most important attributes for me. And I was able to do that on the Shield Plus a little bit better because of the grip. I was also able to fire it more accurately because it has a new flat face trigger in it that feels great. The sights on the M&P are really good. And the uh, overall recoil and pulse of the M&P, to me, 
is the softest shooting of all the subcompacts. So not only do I get a better capacity, I get more accuracy, I get a better firing grip, but I also get faster follow-up shots. And all those things put together for the same price as all the other subcompacts, around four to $500, maybe even $600, depending on where you live. It's a fantastic overall package, in my opinion. If you're gonna buy just one gun, that would be a great choice to have. You're gonna have it on you all the time. It's got enough capacity and accuracy to deal with most situations, can be reloaded relatively quickly. It's available in most areas, and on top of that, it takes uh, shield holsters, which is probably the highest sold carry gun ever. So you're gonna have availability, you're gonna have access, you're gonna have accessories, you're gonna have a good price, good recoil, good control, good reliability, and great accuracy. And for for that reason, the Shield Plus definitely hits my number three. Now in at number two, we're gonna have the most innovative gun of the last 40 years, in my opinion. It is gonna be the Lago Arms Alien. The Lago Arms Alien is a pistol that is hard to explain. <laughs> it essentially has the HK P7 gas system in it. It has a hammer fired system, but it's internal and the hammer hits it from the top as opposed to the bottom. It is one of the lowest bore axes in the firearm industry. I believe it's actually the lowest. The barrel is is in line with your trigger finger when you have your trigger out on the gun. It's so low that it's right in line with the web of your hand. I have many videos on this gun if you wanna check them out, including a thousand round review. It has a weight of around 36 ounces, making it overall great weight for draws, transitions, all that stuff, plus it has enough weight to help control the recoil. It has a capacity of two 17 round magazines, however more are obviously available, and then it has a 4.6 inch barrel. It has a rail on the top of the gun which will make it either optics ready or not. You can literally just QD the optic on or off and it will retain zero. So you can have an iron sight gun and in 30 seconds you can have a red dot gun and you don't have to change the zero at all. Very innovative, very impressive, but that's not where it stops. It has great texture, it has a phenomenal trigger. Easily is the lowest recoiling, or at least muzzle flipping firearm that I've ever tested. Uh, any handgun I've ever shot, it has the lowest muzzle flip. Now that is because it's pushing the recoil straight back in your hand, so you do feel a little bit more of a bump in your hand, and you do feel the recoil, it's just going straight to the rear and returning. And that, you might feel a little bit more than something like on a custom 2011 but the dot is literally not gonna move and as, as fast as you can pile off rounds you're gonna continue to hit your target so it's it's very low recoiling very fast the trigger is amazing I was able to hit uh, targets including 8 inch plates and even 6 inch plates at 75 yards I was able to take out the top plate of my uh, Texas star at 75 yards oh man I don't know if we can hit one of those plates on a Texas star <laughs> well I mean, if that is an example of how accurate the gun is, I don't really know how else to show it. So it's a very, very accurate gun, but it is very, very expensive, which is why it's at number two. I, I couldn't put it at number one with a price tag of four grand. And it's, is it worth it? To me, absolutely. But is it worth it to most people? No. But that doesn't stop it from being the highest performing gun that I've shot in a very, very long time. Now it has some minor setbacks, which we've talked about in the thousand round review, but I'm sure in future iterations, all those things will be worked out. And eventually the Alago Arms Alien will go from a gun that nobody can afford to a gun that eventually with enough R&D and enough time, at least the operating system will be at some point, I assume it'll be in polymer frame pistols and everything else, and eventually it'll be just like the Browning tilting barrel design where it'll be the mainstay, but we're not there yet, give it 50 years. Now, before we get into number one, I wanna mention a couple honorable mentions. Uh, the first one being the Springfield Waypoint. It is a bolt action rifle chambered in either 6.65 6 or 308 that you can get uh, nowhere. <laughs> Literally nowhere. I just got one, it took me a month to get one, but we don't have rounds down through it yet, or it could have certainly made this list. Uh, also on the honorable mentions list is gonna be the Atlas Artemis. It was the highest performing firearm for me of 2021, or basically ever. I actually even won a bullseye competition with this year, which I was pretty happy about. On loan for Manning and Sons, big up to you Manning and Sons for sending me guns I can't afford. Thank you for that. And hope everybody else thanks him too, or you wouldn't be able to see the damn thing, because it was $6,000, I can't afford to buy that gun. So that's why it's not in the top 10. Although if everybody could afford it, it would be hard pressed not to be number one. I mean, you're talking about a gun that can shoot sub two inch groups at 50 yards and it fires faster than you can pull the trigger. It's an amazing thing. I've got a couple videos on it, check it out. That being said, the number one is something you certainly can't afford and it is the Walter PDP. I fell in love with this gun this year. I got it 
for the first shots video in January, I got the compact and the full size from Walter. And since then I purchased my own five inch for competition. I've been running it through the gauntlet with a lot of other competition guns and it has exceeded those in every way, including my venerable Glock 34. The gun has one of the best triggers on the market. It has some of the best ergonomics. It has back straps. It has an optics ready system right out of the box. You got to buy the plate, but other than that, you're good to go. It has co witness sights on it already, a full length dust cover with a Picatinny rail. It has front slide serrations, and it comes with two 18 round magazines, all for under $500 in a lot of places. Sometimes it's around $600, but either way, in my opinion, that gun is the best bang for the buck. It is like a Canic, but it's made by Walter a company that's been making quality firearms for over 100 years, has a great track record of customer service and just making quality guns. I've shot a thousand rounds through two versions of the PDP with another 500 on the way for a third one. And it is one of the most reliable, most accurate, fastest shooting guns I've ever shot. And for a polymer frame striker fired pistol that only weighs 26 ounces, it would be easy to carry that all day. You could take it home, use it for a home defense gun, and then you could take it out to the range and you could shoot a competition with it. And all three you could excel with. There's not a lot of guns you can say that can do that. And for the price that it does it at, can't be anything else but number one. If you don't like my list and you have a different list, make sure to put it in the comment section. I'd love to uh, look at yours. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelter and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Overall weight of around apparently 5.28 feet. But uh, that's the, the overall weight is not 5.28 feet. Did I write that? Yeah. <laughs>